And I've got two extra pair of legs where my loving parts used to live. In my grogginess, I wish I'd taken something other than law school prep courses, because nowhere in philosophy or poli sci did anyone teach me the biology of the American Revolution. That's my first thought. It's rational and quiet, and I feel too on top of my head, twitch, as if the new antenna approved of my sardonic curiosity. My second thought is, holy crap, she's going to kill me. Maybe you'd freak out about how you became a cockroach first and worry about the landlady later, but baby kinks, you don't know my landlady. This woman hires and fires a new pest control agent every week. This woman sneaks into my kitchen and sprays raid on my dishes. This woman over years and years has left my bathroom floor so poisonous. I've seen cockroaches crawl up the drain and die before they cross the first tile. So, I should avoid the bathroom and the kitchen and the whole floor, actually. But I can't just sit here on the bed. Sometimes she creeps into my room and changes my sheets, and I'd normally appreciate her attempt to mother me. I really do, but now there's nothing I want more than privacy. Oh gosh. I crawl to the window between my room and her common area to look out for her, and sure enough, her shadow falls across me. I never noticed her hunched back or her ghastly pale skin until she became the giantess bearing my doom. That's not me being over. She always carries a can of bug spray, and this one literally says, Doom, across the front. Should I freeze still? Will I be harder to see then? Her vision's failing, right? But I'm a roach the size of a baby's foot. So big, Louis Braille couldn't miss me. And she's coming. Coming through the bathroom. Her footsteps vibrate through the floor. She approaches the bed. I know she doesn't move fast, so it must be that I'm thinking slow, so slow. Should I crawl back under the covers? I'm still clinging to the window, and I can't turn my head to look away from it, because my neck's covered with stiff armor, forcing me to always look down, never up. Oh gosh, always looking down. How depressing is that? She's here. I sense her movement somehow. I have no idea how. Maybe via yeah, antenna. Hold still or run? Hold still? Run? My legs choose run. It's like I don't even give a say. I hear her guttural, ugh. Not a scream, just the same pure, unfiltered disgust they spew at you if you wet your pants the first day of kindergarten. They don't usually kill you for that, though. Is that all? Is she killing me just for being gross? Isn't that unjust? Spritz. I'm overthinking this, and spray hits the wall behind me. Its stabbing scent fills me like I'm breathing with my whole body, like I'm covered in holes, and the smells of liquid fear seeps into each one of them, and these legs want me to hide under the bed down on the floor. But no, no legs stop. The floor is poison. Is this why cockroaches can live weeks without heads? Cling to the wall. That's all I can do, just keep to the wall while the legs carry me away from the spray. But you'll think to spray ahead of me, that's what women do. Somehow I convince the back brain to let me swerve up left around where she'll spray and she misses. But it's give and take. The back brain takes me down in response under the bed. The back brain wants to freeze now, freeze in the dark. But even though I can't see her, I know the landlady's either getting ready to move the bed or she's bending over to spray under it. We need to keep moving and now I'm in control. I stumble over my front legs, but I can do this. Years of experience killing cockroaches has taught me how murderers think I can outsmart her. Look, back brain, I even know where to hide. All the cockroaches come from the shower drain in the bathroom. There's a nest somewhere down there. I just have to get there without touching the floor. We round the corner, and my body angles.
was just enough to let me see the old lady without twisting my impossible neck. She still bent over one hand on the bed, spraying and spraying under there. I can see liquid seeping out along the floor, looking like blood. With her, you're almost as likely to die from drowning as from the poison. I bet they could sell her those bug spray cans filled with nothing but water, and her kill count wouldn't change. I'm perched on the wall by the shower drain now, and we're almost in the clear. Or the opposite of the clear. I guess as a person, I liked to be in the clear. But I'm getting the feeling from the back brain that I now prefer to be in the narrow, in the cramped, or in the dark hole, not the clear. I'm overthinking again. This is why cockroaches sometimes just sit there and do nothing, even when they're caught and you're about to kill them. Maybe we're not frozen in fear. Maybe we just can't stop thinking. What with two brains and all? Okay, stop. Clear. Narrow. Whatever. I need to get into the drain. But I don't trust my legs to jump the space between the wall and the hole. They barely bend to crouch. I'm so fat. Big, flat, fatty. Whose fault is that, I wonder? I wasn't fat before. I've got a different idea. Makes the back brain angry. I'm aiming up. It wants down, always down. I meant to look down, to go down. That's the way of my people now, I guess. But look, back brain, if I crawl up towards the ceiling, I can fall from the ceiling right onto the drain. So I do that. And as I fall back, the back brain freaks out and unfurls wings. They're sucky wings because I'm so fat. But I glide and then I flop. I realized suddenly I wasn't afraid of falling at all. People are afraid of falling. Cockroaches are afraid of up. I found the nest, and I hate it. Loads of greasy bodies a shove past me, twitchy and rude, and in the corner tent, white translucent roaches hatch on their mother's back, spilling out from under her wings. Beyond them, five huge males eat a not-quite-dead female out of her skeleton. I think I'm gonna vomit. Then I realize I can't. That terrifies me more. What am I doing here? I don't know my body. I don't know this place. I know. Breathe. Breathe. Crap. I don't know how to control my breathing. I don't have lungs. Do cockroaches have gills? I don't know. I don't know anything about my body. Help. Help. Can I hyperventilate? Can I pass out? Well, no. I'm still breathing. My whole body feels cool and airy. I lift a spindly leg, turning it over to look at its spikes, and then run it over this armored neck. Yeah, there's air coming out of my neck. Everywhere. I can feel it. I guess I've got holes all over. Pores and stuff. I guess that's how I breathe. I keep rubbing my head with my leg. It feels nice. Kind of like hanging out in the shower just as the steam is lifting off. I've totally seen bugs do this. Groom themselves, haven't I? Yeah, they lick their legs to get the gunk off. Man, that's gross. I mean, it's like, I don't know, when you're a little kid and you're picking your nose, you always hope no one sees. Except now no one cares. How come if a kid licks itself, it's gross, but if a cat does it, it's cute? So maybe a cockroach is just a bald cat with two more legs, pointier ears, and the ability to survive radiation poisoning, and sometimes fly. A super cat. Both species even share a penchant for eating humans who die alone behind locked doors. See, I'm like a gentle, ugly cat. It's fine. Even this nest. It's not that different from New York or Washington, D.C. now, huh? Lots of greasy bodies shoving past me, all too hurried to look where they're growing. Mothers just trying to get their kids off their back. Even those guys eating their own kind. I mean, that's what lawyers and doctors do, right? We make our living off the sick and the dead. Heck, some countries in Europe even have assisted suicide docs who make money for putting you out of your misery. That's all these guys eating the lady are doing, right? Socialized, end-of-life care. I want to be alone. But I'm afraid if I go 
so low. They'll think I'm sick or injured or something and try to eat me. I mean, I don't know. I don't know the rules here. If I obey the rules, do I get another shot at humanity like some kind of reincarnation gag? Never believed in that, but here I am. And they say crappy human beings become cockroaches in the next life. I did steal from my parents last month. Or maybe I'm waking from a dream like the one the Chinese philosopher Duong Zhe wrote about. He wondered when he dreamt he was a butterfly, if maybe he wasn't actually a butterfly, dreaming he was a man. Maybe that's it. Maybe all my life I've been a cockroach dreaming I was a man, and now it's morning. Now my eyes are open, and it's time to live. hoping and 
some of them will follow me along the wall to weigh out the number I've now accidentally doomed. Ah, how am I gonna earn my way back to humanity if stuff like this happens? The ones who followed me on the wall slow down too. A lot of them pause and twitch, as if afraid of... What? It's light. The windows cast moonlight on the wall. Crap, my companions only want to walk in the shadows. Dang it, I didn't know to care about that. Well, that's not quite true. Little warning in the back of my head, or in the mind of my back, or however I say it now. The back brain hates light. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to use excuses, but I've gotten used to ignoring consciences and vestigial guilt complexes and all that. I like logic, and logically light isn't dangerous, is it? But there's a huge swath of light between me and the entrance to the kitchen. The group divides again. Uh, no, not again. Half of them take the shadows where the floor meets the wall. Half follow me. Slowly. Like they don't trust me. Please trust me, please. Ah. I don't know what trust is for these creatures. Enjoying someone's pheromones and following them because you associate the smell with things you like. Things you know from repetition and time and antennae here say to be good. Yeah, not so different from the first impressions on which people operate. Crap, will they all think I'm sick now because of my odd, uncockroach like behavior? I'm willing to bet sick cockroaches, sick cockroaches ignore safety, so these guys are used to associating weird behavior with weakness. To eat. No, I'm hopeful. Positive thinking. Just a little while longer, and they'll see the promised land, and then they'll all eat their fill, and then they won't eat me, and maybe they'll even come close to liking me, to associating me with good pheromones, or whatever. But as I try to lead them up the ceiling, to cross the room to meet the pantry, I find myself alone. Dang it, I can't lift my head to see them, but I don't have to. The soft vibrations of their feet, their safe smells, it's all gone. I could cry. No, come back. I can't be good without your approval. I need you to like me. What is success without you? I'm a roiling exoskeleton of anger, and I don't know how to express it, so the back brain interprets it as fear, and now I'm running berserk back and forth across the ceiling, and I don't care who sees. How am I going to earn my humanity back or make the most of this dream? Or whatever it is I'm meant to do, when I'm so out of place, this is unfair, this is impossible, no one wants to be a cockroach anyway. I want to look up. I want to lift my head and see more than the meal in front of me in the place I'm walking or the girl I'm like. I can't even scream about it because my mouth makes no sounds. And if there's anything humans love, it's making sounds. Why couldn't I be a dog? The other dogs would love me. I'd be the funniest, most popular dog around. Hey guys, here's the mother of my puppies. I call her Karma because she's a bitch. That's sexist, actually. Maybe that's why I'm a cockroach. Maybe I'm a horrible person. And this is my punishment from God. But the more I'm in this body, the more certain I am that there's no re reincarnation or punitive spiritual being or anything else behind this. It's just a logical... What does logical mean, though? Tiny aliens with two brains that breathe through their skin. That's funny. If I'd never heard of a cockroach and you told me about it, I wouldn't believe you. Or maybe I would. I haven't studied a lick of science since high school, and I've never stepped into a lab. So I've never experimented firsthand with atoms or slimes, or even dissected a frog. And yet I believe everything they tell me in museums or on the news about the newest half dinosaur, half bird, or the hatred collision with thingies. For all I know, it's all special effects, and I'm in Chuang's butterfly dream after all. Everything I ever learned, I heard from someone else. Who heard it from somewhere else? And it's all a collection of rumors anyway, so why do I trust some things I've never seen and not others? How do I know the Hindus are wrong or the animal spirit worshippers or the crazy evangelical screaming on the street corner about a shape-shifting extraterrestrial with elemental powers as a messiah? 
but I think that's the closest I get to hyperventilating, and I think I need to calm down. I make my way to the pantry and bury myself in the bag of flour, nestling into its powdery comfort. Stay positive. Maybe if I go back to sleep, I can dream. night again, and I've learned one thing. Wanting a thing doesn't make it true, and believing a thing doesn't make it true, and I'm still a cockroach. Mm -hmm. Not a man dreaming he's a cockroach, just a roach, and it's not a wonderful, gross social utopia. They're licking me because they want to know what I taste like in case I die, or because they like the crime that covers me. They all want sex with me because they want babies, because they want to take over the world. I shouldn't be flattered, and I shouldn't be happy. Also, I'm a terrible cockroach. I don't see them as my equals, and because of that, I got a bunch of them killed last night. Fake altruism. I was selfish, just wanted to earn my karma points and ditch. That's about as far from true goodness as the time all of us rich kids back in college volunteered to help the homeless for a GPA boost, and the one of the pre-med students squealed with disgust when a stinky old bearded man tried to hug her. I know what goodness is not. But do I know what goodness is? The irony of a cockroach snuggled in a pound of flour contemplating goodness isn't lost on me. Clearly, if as a human being I was too small to understand it, I'll never understand it now. Well, except humans don't get to experience the goodness of swimming in a pile of food. That's goodness. No, no, back brain, it isn't. I don't want to be happy with this bang. Bano? That's hard to pronounce for me, but no. I don't want to be happy with this banal, mediocre existence. I want to be miserable and then find something better. I'm not alone. I'm not alone. I squirm out of the flower. Another roach, a female, sits in the ragged hole I ate through the bag, flickering her antenna excitedly. She slips one slender, supple antenna between her mandibles. She slicks it back as she runs her forefoot over her face, like a girl pushing her hair behind her. She dives in beside me. I've never been so turned on in my life. My pheromones brought her here. I found her this food. I know that I did this, and I don't even care. I'm in awe at her bravery, her beauty, her unfiltered zest for flower. You followed me when no one else would, I wanted to say. She eats, and that's its own reward. I know what goodness is now, but before the flower comes the plant, and before the plant comes the sun, and the sun is up, as it is daytime now, the sun is up, as in, in the sky, which I still can't look at. Did I ever care to look up before, though? I think I only care now because I can't, but honestly, I never took a break to stargaze, or count clouds, or even watch patterns on my ceiling, and all the philosophy classes I ever took pointing me towards other people not towards something beyond us all. If there's something out there, I don't know it, but I do know that I want to find it. The goodness beyond. The sun that feeds the plant, that makes the flower, that lets me live. Wherever you are, up, I will find you, and I will do whatever it takes to love you. I'm not alone in this. There are twelve others in the flower now, and all of them got here by walking across the ceiling. Maybe it's not the back brain that's afraid of up. Maybe it's me. Maybe I... Everything shakes. I hear the old ladies. <laughs> Down is happening. Happening fast and suddenly in a pressurized explosion. And the flowers flying everywhere. And I've hit something solid. Did she knock the bag of flour onto the floor? We're all scattering for closed spaces, and then like the cosmic joke, this all is just before I've figured out the punchline. Sprints. Agony envelops me. She got me with the two. It's been two days. What is that? That's nothing. No, no. I kick against St. Paul's goads. I rage against the gods of Euripides. I'm on my back as it burns, and every one of my breathing pores suffocates in pain, but I thrash all my legs at the heavens beyond the distant white ceiling, because no, 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 I 
So real. 